Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. My name is Balram Prasad and I am working with Microsoft as a senior software engineer. In today's demo, we are going to see how we can deploy a DeepSeq R1 model using Azure Foundry service. And then we are going to try with Chat Playground. As we have seen that DeepSeq models has created a buzz around industry for its low usage of compute. So let's explore that you know, how we can deploy. So for this demo, we are into Azure portal and we are going to use AI Foundry services which we created into earlier demo. So let's go to Azure AI Foundry Hub and then launch AI Foundry portal. We have created this project inside Hub in our previous demo. You can see our previous demo how to create Foundry service and how to create project and how we have deployed the GPT-4 models uh, in previously. So let's go to utilize the same project and we will continue with that. So uh, right now in our project section, we have GPT-4 model which we deployed earlier video. Let's go to project. And in project section, we can go to our model catalog and we can see that now that O3 mini is here and also DeepSeq R1 is here, the latest models. I do not have right now access to O1's reasoning models, O1 and O3 models. If I go and try to create this O1 models, this will ask that one, we need to registration required. So I need to go and register that one, depending upon criteria, I will get access. So I do not have right now, I have access for deep seek. So I will go for that one. Similar case for O3 mini. If I wanted to check out right now, I have to raise that request for registration. So we will use these models later. These two O1 and O3 are reasoning models and same with the DeepSeq R1 also. DeepSeq R1 is also a reasoning model. So we are going to deploy this one right now and we will see how we can use. If you wanted to read more about this one, that how much parameter and other things are here, we can read that one. And also we can see the existing deployment. I do not have anything right now. And code sample, how to use that one if we wanted to use via code if we wanted to use via azure foundry sdk for all the details uh, whatever we want to make a good chat bot or ai agent all these things we can do via code so that all samples is provided but in this video we are going to just deploy r1 model and we are going to use from playground so let's go ahead and deploy and once we are going to deploy, because we are into a right now project section inside the project, it is going to deploy inside project. So we can rename that depending upon our name, naming convention. And then we can see that right now serverless API is available in this following region. So that is okay for us. And if we wanted to see the pricing and other things that we can see right now pricing is zero. So we will see that one, right? So right now it is going to deploy. So right now if you see that provisioning state is creating and it will take few minutes to provision state to creating to succeeded. So let's wait for a few minutes. So once it is deployed, we can see provisioning state is succeeded. We can go to chat playground. And now before going to chat playground, if I go in model plus in point, I will have two models, right? One is GPT-4, one is DeepSeq model. You can go for chat playground from here also. So let's go for chat playground. And in previous demo, we have used GPT-4 and we have seen that one. So I will keep this open right now, GPT-4. I will open another chat playground. And I will select deep DeepSeq. So if we see DeepSeq has different parameters, right now it does not have a lot of different things because it is just launched inside Azure Foundry. So it will add a lot of different parameter, which we can see that with uh, GPT-4. It has uh, that you can give model to instruction and context. And also we can bring all the data and other things from this section. So we will see just basic purpose right now. Let's ask few questions. Let's type hi for GPT-4. And then we will ask that same question with our deep seek. So right now it is welcoming us. Let's ask that another question. Could you tell me about
from computing and which companies are leading the development right we can ask this question quantum spelling is wrong uh, let's see that uh, right now it is giving the reasoning and model is thinking that hey user has asked about quantum computing it is trying to recall that memory and other things what he has uh, this model has learned and then it is going to give the details that he remembers that big companies like IBM, Google, Microsoft and other things included. So uh, it is going to write a few more. I'm going to uh, ask the same question with GPT-4. So it is a little bit more formatted one answer and it is it seems that uh, because GPT-4 is not a reasoning model so it does not think that much because O1 and O3 and other things are reasoning models so that's why we will see that little bit different here and there and based on what type of data it has been trained right so we can see all the details. Now we can change little bit here with prompt let's use that some prompt sample and I'm going to ask that uh, that hey you are going to play the role of marketing writing assistant so it is going to prompt all the in model instruction that hey you are going to use this one and then we can ask anything that depending upon can you write me uses can you write the story for five year old kid let's try it and we can ask that same thing with uh, uh, this our compute, right? So, can you play a role with writing assistant and okay, let's ask this question. So right now it might be thinking or because we have asked before it finishes that earlier answer it might be broken also because right now it just launched so let's see that one maybe we need to refresh that page in the time we can see that this gpt4 has written a story for us for thinking that its story will fit for a five-year-old kid so that all the details is coming and let's see it might have stopped let me refresh this page and let me write let's see that so now it is going to think okay and now it is trying to uh, say something so it is thinking that what has user has asked and how i'm going to respond to this one and so now it has also uh, tried to retain that and if we wanted to see the codes right that how the code we can integrate with any of application so if we see python code or c sharp code that we can use that this kind of sdk and we can make web calls and we can pass the request body and we can pass the roles similar to whatever we were doing with a lot of uh, different uh, model so model wise there is no much changes we have to just change the parameters and other things what is the base address and other things and it might be more standardized right this is the deep seek model and if we go for same for gpt4 if we see that right uh, c sharp like it is almost it will be similar that code that what roles and little bit parameter and other things will be changed but it is basically going to call the endpoint and it is going to get the details depending upon what we are passing in the input which role they are asking what question we are asking and other details it is going to come so this is what i wanted to show in this quick video that how we can leverage the deep seek on azure I hope you have liked this video. We will see some more details and play with uh, this uh, different feature provided by Azure AI Foundry in next video. Thank you.